Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, great, uh, great of you to join us today to talk about uh, Software 3.0. Um, so my name is uh, Dan. I'm the CTO here at Fine. Uh, Fine, for, for those of you who are unfamiliar with, uh, with us, we uh, are building a multi-agent platform for software development. So it's a platform where you can build your own AI agent uh, to automate sort of any kind of software development task. Uh, you can build a backend engineer, um, Python AI agent, React AI agent, whatever. So um, on the personal level, I've been building software for 15 years, uh, really enjoying uh, the uh, profession of building software, uh, not not so much the coding part or the specific part of uh, uh, writing uh, or writing code, and this is what I really like about software three point oh. So I hope to uh, also share with you kind of my personal experience as a CTO and uh, engineering leader uh, in in terms of uh, software. 3.0 and what it means for me. So today, what I want to talk with you uh, is really about what software 3.0 really means uh, to us uh, here at Fine, how we practice it, what skills um, we are going to, to, to need in order to develop software in this new AI era, uh, how the workflow is going to look like, what are AI agents and Maybe if we have the time uh, to go through some real life examples, uh, um, we can use AI agents um, in our day to day life. But before we sort of dive into uh, the specifics of software 3.0, I want to start maybe with the obvious is that we still have a job. We're still speaking as a software engineer fellow. We still, we still have a job. There is still a uh, high demand for building software. Uh, the software market is still $1 trillion market. So the, the world still have problems to solve and we need to solve those problems with software. So we need people to um, uh, solve those problems with software. And the last time I checked, Software developers and software engineers are those who are uh, uh, qualified for the job of analyzing and solving a uh, problem. Even if the profession and the workflow um, is going to change uh, permanently, and uh, as we know it, uh, as we know it today. So, software 3.0. It's it's a new era. Uh, it's been almost a year now since ChatGPT uh, broke into our lives and really changed how we debug software, how we plan software, and how we write code, how we build, uh, how we build software. Uh, you can see this even if with uh, Stack Overflow um, recently uh, uh, dropped in 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 uh, in traffic uh, because. People now just use ChatGPT as part of their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, uh, workflow when building software. So if the workflow is changing, we also need, uh, it, it's also require a, a new set of skills. So if we take a look at the, the old world, let's call it the software 2.0 world, a significant part of our job was writing code. It was almost equivalent, right? Being a coder uh, was almost equivalent to being software engineer, even though uh, in my experience, this wasn't necessarily true. You could, uh, you could be a really good uh, coder, but not necessarily a good software engineer and vice versa. But writing code was the significant part of building software. Uh, on top of that, you also had to be able to review code and give feedback and maybe 
uh, uh, write uh, specifications for uh, um, um, for others or to collaborate on other assignments. Now with software 3.0, we see uh, a paradigm shift where code is no longer significant. I mean, it's it's still there, but with software 3.0, the um, majority, the the major part of our job is is as a software engineer is mainly to guide AI on how to build software. And we need to get a lot more better on guiding AI to uh, uh, how, how we want the, the AI to build and write the code for us. And of course, we still need to be able to review and verify the code. We actually need even getting better at uh, reviewing code as, uh, in, in what we are today. And uh, lastly, we, all, we still need to write code because there is still a last mile that we need, uh, uh, that, that we need to do. So we see this kind of paradigm shift between software 2.0 um, uh, and software 3.0 where our role as software engineers really shifting from writing code to uh, guiding the AI on how to write code. But the core skill, I think, it still remained the same in both parties. Still, our, our role as a software engineer is being able to identify and analyze and break down the problem uh, and solve it uh, uh, um, in, in, both, in both parties. So if there are new, if, uh, these new skills also comes with a new workflow. Um, which looks very different to what we practice today when we build software. So how is the, the uh, software 3.0 workflow looks like? It starts like today by specifying the task. You get an assignment from the product, you get the business requirements, and then you need to write some specifications. We do it also today, but maybe in software 2.0, it's easier to skip on this task. It's easier to just get the headline of the JIRA ticket or and then just start coding, uh, even though it's not, even today it's not, uh, it's not a good idea. It's also a good idea to, uh, to really specify uh, what you want to get done with, uh, uh, before you get started with it. So every task in software 3.0 starting with specifications. Um, AI can help you also with that. But once we have the specifications, these are the guidelines we can assign handoff to an AI agent. And this AI agent is a specific agent that is specialized in a uh, specific in a domain specific domain framework or use case. Um, I can have as many agents as I want, but from our experience, agents that are specific and that are designed to specific uh, uh, coding assignments work way better than general uh, general agents. So for example, I would have an agent uh, which is uh, uh, which specializes in assignments in the backend. And I would have an agent which is specializes in front-end assignments. And I, will, and I will assign the specific parts of the uh, uh, assignment, the project, to the relevant agent. For example, in Fine, we have um, uh, we have currently six agents that we use internally. And we have for the backend, we have three agents uh, for different areas in the backend. And I'll, I'll show you uh, in the next few slides what, uh, what uh, our agents look like. So I assign the, uh, the task to, I end off to the task to an AI agent. And then we start off uh, 
uh, to iterate and the agent uh, uh, updating the, the files, creating new files, it's doing the, the changes in the code base in the repository. And I provide the agent feedback until the agent is done and I take it as a developer to the last mile. Usually I need to change a few lines of code. There is a, we reach to a point where the agent um, uh, cannot, uh, cannot accomplish uh, uh, the, the task. And I take it uh, back as a human and, and uh, complete the, the assignment and bring it to production. So how agent looks like in, in reality? Those those agents that we spoke about. Each agent has a, a few uh, properties. Each agent has an identity. You are a very senior uh, backend engineer specializes in fast API framework or in Spring Spring Boot uh, Java, and so on. It has the context of the specific project that it, uh, it's working on and uh, the specific uh, tech stack and dependencies this project has. So <clears throat> um, agents will also have uh, uh, agents that are specialized in, in certain type of tasks will have maybe the third party documentation as a resource. And of course they have tools to perform actions and get information from the real world. For example, we have the debugger agent, which uh, automatically debugs our code. Uh, and this agent has an integration with Sentry, our monitoring service, we, where the agent is able to um, uh, read the, the issue details, stack trace, uh, in order to perform, to fix the bug. Um, and this is how it's going to look in, in uh, practical terms. It's going to be uh, usually, never mind if it's in, in our, on our platform or on um, other platforms, uh, it's going to be usually some sort of configuration file defining the agent. And a workflow of steps this agent will uh, will take, and you, you can get really creative with with this workflow. There is um, all this workflow uh, defines is just a very uh, a series of steps that the agent uh, takes in every execution. So um, you can, uh, uh, for example. You can have it to clarify uh, the specifications with the user, and then you can have it to generate code based on those clarification with specific instructions. <clears throat> so um, before we, uh, I, I show you uh, one or more few examples, I think it's a good time to pause and really think if the workflow is changing and if the skills uh, that are required for software engineering uh, are changing, it, I really wonder if the IDE that we all know and use for years is gonna stay uh, the same in the next few years. Because for my own personal experience, in the last few months, I really, 90% uh, uh, of the code that I'm writing is, get, is, is being written by AI, by agents. So it's a question if, uh, the, the, if we will still need the IDEs in the, next, uh, in the next future. And definitely, even if we do, it's, it's gonna change completely. So uh, and back to back to the the agent, um, the game here is that I think what's really important 
uh, to understand in order to make the shift to software 3.0 is that we need to uh, embrace the notion that we as software engineers, we are no longer responsible for the part of writing code. Our uh, role these days is to be the orchestrator and guide AI to how to build the software. And once you are able to make that uh, change in your state of mind, there's actually no limit in what kind of tasks you can automate with those AI agents. And you could have an agent that automatically reads and analyze your sentry logs or data dog logs uh, and implement the OWN link in your backend. You could have a migration uh, agent that migrates any framework like Python 2, 2 to Python 3, or as we did in Fine a few weeks ago, we migrate uh, a platform for from Flask to Fast API overnight. You could have agents that uh, generates tests, types, documentation, or if you have a cross-platform application like uh, iOS and Android, and you have missing functionality in uh, in your uh, Android application, you could build an agent that implements uh, the missing functionality by reading the iOS implementation. There is no, really no limit to what those agents can do. Of course, at the end of the day, we are in control and we need to get the last mile, but they are really good uh, uh, to get the 80, if not the 90% uh, done, depending on how well you define the agent and the specification. Um, and if you want uh, to have a look on more, a few more examples, you can head over to um, uh, our GitHub repository, where we have a few uh, uh, agent uh, use cases. Um, you can see those uh, configuration files that I shared with you. So for example, um, here is the Python Fast API agent that we use uh, every day. Uh, here it's fine. And you can see that uh, it has uh, just uh, 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 a few tools. It has the Fast API framework as a resource uh, for documentation to better produ to produce better better uh, Fast API code, and uh, the instructions which are really specific for this uh, framework on how to generate uh, Fast API related code. Or, for example, uh, we have here the Nest uh, JS module generator which is an agent which only generates modules in a uh, uh, Nest.js framework. It's very specific. Uh, it, it, it is designed to, to complete this very specific kind of task. So uh, go to GitHub uh, um, slash find, find HQ slash find to see those examples. Um, yeah, so just as a recap, um, I think that uh, uh, this, the workflow in software 3. What, what software 3.0 means for us is just a new workflow where we uh, as developers change from being responsible to write code for to, to be the squad lead who orchestrate the AI agent to complete the, the assignment. And for me, um, and with that I'll, I'll uh, wrap up, uh, for me as a, as a software engineer or CTO engineering leader, I can definitely say that uh, this kind of workflow really bring back uh, the joy and flow to the uh, software engineering world. So it's really about the ultimate developer experience because as I write in software 3.0, writing the specifications 
actually means writing the code. So I can just write, for me today, writing code is just writing uh, a Google Doc. I write the specifications on the notebook and it's just, there's no limit there. There is no barriers of syntax code. There are no red lines, there are no linting. I can just write pure business logic, pure software engineering on the paper. And once uh, the specifications are ready, I hand it off to an agent and then the uh, deliverable of this thought process uh, that I did on paper is just uh, being translated almost one-to-one -one as I wanted to code. So this is really a big opportunity for me, not only to, to, to produce more and to be more productive, but also to really enjoy the work without the specifics and the boring parts of you know, the, the, the uh, software development process. So with that, uh, um, I'm gonna hand it off back to Jonathan. Um, if you have any questions, I'm here to, uh, we're here to uh, answer them. All right, thank you, Dan. Um, guys, feel free to uh, unmute yourself if you want to ask a question or just uh, drop it in the chat. Uh, meanwhile, then uh, I'll ask the first one. Uh, maybe you can provide some real life examples of using agents um, in some different scenarios to give us a better picture um, of what's possible, some cool things that uh, we did with it. Yeah. So I think the underlying takeaway from here is that from my experience, I, there is almost no task in the day-to-day -day life that you cannot use the agent to automate uh, to automate a task. So it's just about getting the right agent or the right specification. But uh, of course, agents, uh, the obvious answer is that uh, boilerplate code. Anytime that you start a feature or a project, uh, agents can do the 80% for you. Um, Migrations and modernizations are also a really good uh, category of use cases. You can modernize whatever you want. Uh, you can add typing, you can add uh, tests, um, you can migrate one framework to another. So modernization is also a great example for, for uh, agents. But the where I enjoy agents the most is just the day-to-day the small, the small improvements. Once we got agents to work and refactor existing code bases, this is really the, the, the game changer. That's great. I see a question from Gal regarding IDE. Have you seen any IDE which incorporates AI? And not talking about Copilot. Yeah, I think there is, a, there is one. Um, can't remember the, the name. Uh, I think there is one that's called uh, Kersel uh, AI or something, um, which is kind of uh, AI-driven uh, IDE. Uh, but again, we use, we for example, in Fine, we use mostly Fine to generate the specification and then to, to end off the assignment to, to, to an agent. And then we do the last mile in this code for the traditional ID. Yeah. 